Good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I want to talk to you today about the market and reevaluating the market. I saw on Facebook an agent had posted uh, an observation about the market, stating that from the apex of the market at the end of January, early February, until now, the market had lost 20% of their value. And his uh, observation was that if you went in with 20% down, you'd lost all your equity. And while that's true, I think it gives a false, really, picture of what's going on. To understand the market and the buyers and sellers at play in the market, you need to understand that there's really two groups. There's the end user, and I'm going to call in the end user the person who's going to occupy the property or the investor who's going to rent out the property. They're the end user. And then there's the speculator, and to a certain extent, the renovator, who's in to make a profit and leave. And I would say that the speculator is very much like the day trader in the stock market. They realize the risks. They're counting on moving in, making a profit, and moving out. They're gambling. And there's risk when you gamble. And what we've seen happen is when the market stopped going up. Now, when the market was going up, if the market went up 20%, for example, if you put in 20% down, rented it out so that it carried, and then sold it after it went up 20%, you've doubled your money. And in case of 30% or 40%, the profits got that much more extensive. And so the speculators were making money, and now the speculators are sidelined. But if you talk about the end user, you need to understand why they went in and how much they are impacted by a change in the marketplace. And I contend that they're really not. As you know, I'm an investor and I have a number of properties that are investment properties. And I would say, um, with this downturn, I've lost two or three million dollars in equity. So if I could roll back time, if I could go back to January of this year, take all my investment portfolio, put it on the market, and sell it, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even sell one of them. And the reason why is that wasn't why I bought them. I didn't buy them to roll over for a profit. I bought them so that the rent could pay off the mortgage, and eventually the cash flow would be my retirement income. That hasn't changed. And the same thing with the end user who is going to be occupying the property. If the couple have bought their first home, they're dreaming of it being their forever home, they're going to raise their family there, the kids are going to play in the backyard, throw football around, they're maybe going to grow old on that property. If they qualified for the mortgage, they put a mortgage on the property, they can carry the property, they're in it, the fact that it's reduced in value on paper doesn't change anything. And I'll tell you what else, it's going to come around. I bought a property in 1980, the market dropped, the value dropped, it came back around. Bought a property in 1990, the value dropped, it came back around. In fact, it's worth five times what it was when I paid for it back in 1990. And the same thing's going to happen now. It's going to come back around. So if you bought a property, and if you're an investor, and you've rented it out, and the rent's carrying the mortgage, and you're making mortgage payments with the objective of paying it off, don't worry about what it says on paper. The only thing that, that the net worth impacts is if you're going to sell, which you're not, or if you're going to refinance. So continue to enjoy the property for the reason you bought it. Now you say, well, what about 2008 when there was that colossal meltdown in the US and thousands and thousands and thousands of properties went in foreclosure? Well, you need to understand again why that happened. You see, what was going on, I, I had a friend who was running a REMAX office in Sarasota. He said to me, Wayne, I think it was 2006 or 2007, he said properties went up 80% in one year. So what people were doing all across the US, and especially in hot markets like Las Vegas and, and uh, um, Atlanta and uh, uh, places in California and so on, what they were doing was they were um, buying a property with a long closing with no intention of ever closing. And they were going to sell it off before closing and make a huge profit. They didn't have the money to close. They were just speculating. They were day traders. They were playing around. And when the market stopped going up, started going down, they walked away. And the bank ended up with thousands and thousands of foreclosures. But it wasn't the person who bought to live in the property. It wasn't the person who bought to rent out the property. They weren't impacted. And neither are they today. Now, I'd love to see the market turn around. It's much nicer when it goes up than when it goes down. And it will. What we need, first of all, 
is we need to have a stabilization of interest rates. As long as the Bank of Canada is ratcheting up interest rates to try and impact inflation, people aren't sure where they're at. But I'll tell you that if I'm a, a buyer at, that wants to move into a house, or I'm a buyer who wants to invest in property, it's a great time to buy. You've got choices that you didn't have six months ago. You don't have the competition you had six months ago. you got better selection, and it's a great time to do it. And you could say, well, if I wait a little bit, I might get a little cheaper. Maybe, but you might pay a little more in interest rates. And in the long run, it really doesn't matter. It's hard to believe from this vantage point that one day properties are going to worth twice what they're worth today, but they will. You watch, it'll come around. So if you're uh, a consumer or if you're working with consumers who want to move into a property, encourage them. You'll be doing them a favor. If you're dealing with investors and they want to buy an investment property, if they find the right property, don't wait for the perfect timing. It's always a great time. I believe in real estate, believe wholeheartedly in, believe in real estate, and I feel it's always the time to buy real estate, and it is today. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I'll talk to you again next week.